study. It's not anthropic science. We're talking about bacteria. So the understandings we're looking at, uh, we're looking at uh, bacterial populations growing exponentially, uh, talking about the different bacteria requiring different specific back conditions for growth, discussing the effects of factors such as temperature, nutrient availability, moisture pH, the removal of waste on bacterial growth, um, discussing microorganisms acting as decomposers, and talking about binary fission again. So we're just going to briefly talk about binary fission because this leads into the next bit. So bacteria can undergo binary fission, which is where they simply divide in two um, to reproduce. So their DNA is reproduced, the cell elongates and then pinches off, and you get two cells from one. So because bacteria double every time they reproduce, um, and they can do that very quickly, their growth is exponential. So let's have a look at what that means. So over here we have a picture of some E. coli bacteria reproducing really quickly. This has been sped up, obviously. E. coli can reproduce about every half an hour. So if the conditions are favorable, so there's enough food, the temperature is right, pH is good and so on, um, they can reproduce indefinitely. So what that means is um, one bacteria turns into two, two into four, four into eight, eight into 16, 16 into 32, 32 into 64, and so on, so on, so on. Um, if you follow that through, if, reproducing a, if bacteria are reproducing every half an hour, then after about 10 hours, you'll have a million bacteria from a single bacterium. So that's um, an exponential growth. If we have a look at this curve here, we can see where we've got exponential growth, and that's where the bacteria are increasing numbers for a certain amount of time. So the bacteria can grow exponentially, but then the numbers start to plateau. And the reason for that is they start to run out of space, uh, they start to run out of food, waste can build up, and the conditions for growth otherwise aren't met. So what that means is that the uh, bacteria stop, re well, they continue reproducing, but the same number are dying as are being produced from reproduction. So that leads to this stationary phase. And eventually the buildup of waste usually leads to an increase in death, so the numbers of bacteria decline. Um, there can be other um, features in the environment that can reduce the growth of bacteria. Down here we've got an antibiotic present. So on this side we've got penicillin present, on this side we don't. So the side where the um, antibiotic penicillin isn't present, we can see the bacteria is still reproducing quite happily. On this side, with penicillin, we can see that the cells, they reproduce a little bit, but then they start to explode. And the reason for that is the antibiotic here stops the cell wall from growing. So all organisms have specific requirements to grow, and bacteria are no different. So bacteria need a source of food, they need to be in, in a temperature environment that is suitable. The pH of their environment needs to be suitable as well, so not too acidic, not too basic. Um, there needs to be the presence of water or moisture, and they also need to be able to get rid of waste. So in science labs, we like to culture bacteria so that we can experiment on them. If you put your hand on a bacterial plate, so this is called an agar plate, you can see the bacteria growing quite crazily. Um, here, this piece here, this is an antibiotic disc. So this is a disc that's being soaked in antibiotics, and you can see how the bacteria aren't growing around that disc. Here is a picture of a whole heap of different growth media, so different types of agar with different substances inside them, and we can use these to grow specific species of bacteria or to test bacteria to see what kind of environments they can grow in. So we're going to go through the list of requirements for bacteria. Um, bacteria grow well within certain temperature ranges, and that depends on the species. So generally speaking, most will grow okay between 15 and 45 degrees. If we have a look at this graph over here, though, we can see, so this 15, here we have 15 to 45, so this is the mesophiles in here. Meso means middle. So these are the bacteria that like middling temperatures. But there are some bacteria that can survive at low temperatures, and some bacteria that do really well at high temperatures. So it depends on the species of bacteria. Generally speaking, if the temperature is too low, the bacteria can't reproduce very quickly because the chemical reactions that are life slow down. Uh, the lower the temperature, the slower the chemical reaction. Some bacteria have evolved, though, to deal with really high temperatures. Um, so these hyperthermophiles here are saying about 95 degrees is their optimum temperature. They live in really hot water, so hot springs and things like that. Um, we use enzymes from these guys in specific um, tasks in biology because they can survive at high temperatures. Their enzymes work at high temperatures, and we'll talk about that later on. Temperatures that are too high will kill bacteria because if it's too hot, then you know, enzymes stop working, um, and proteins change shape, and the bacteria just don't survive. Here we've got a little um, experiment that's been done where they've grown bacteria at 28 degrees and they've grown at 18 degrees. And they're measuring how many 
bacteria are growing, so the numbers of bacteria. You can see that at 28 degrees the bacteria grow faster, so we get to their peak earlier and they're also producing more um, than they do at 18 degrees. So bacteria are really good at breaking down organic matter, and we eat food. Food is organic matter. So to stop food from going off, we refrigerate it at 4 degrees, and that keeps it cold enough that the bacteria aren't growing very quickly, but also it's warm enough that the food will be relatively warm and easy to eat um, within a short period of time. Refrigerators we use to slow down bacterial growth. If you freeze food, you go below 0 degrees, and most fridges are, uh, freezers are set at 20 degrees below 0. That stops bacterial growth in its tracks, um, and that's handy. But then as soon as you defrost the food, you get it back to above um, zero degrees, the bacteria will start to reproduce again. Down here we've got uh, some fruit that aren't being refrigerated, and we can see they're being broken down, and some are even starting to grow. So they're being broken down by bacteria, and often fungi as well break them down, and that's uh, what's happening to these fruit down here. This picture down here, we've got some different species of bacteria, and we've got some different um, sources of food that the bacteria is often found in, and also the temperature that they can survive in. And this is where we can see that even cooling the food down to 4 degrees isn't going to stop some bacterial species. So if we look at this Listeria species, it can grow from minus 1.5 degrees to 45 degrees Celsius. So if the fridge is at 4 degrees, um, the bacteria can still grow quite happily. And this is why food will still go off, even if it's been in the fridge for a little while. So as talked about before, bacteria need food to survive, and oftentimes they're breaking down specific organic compounds as their food. And the fact that they do this means that we can use this to break up bacteria into different groups based on the type of foods that they eat. So in biology labs, we often use different types of nutrient agar, so different nutrient solutions to grow bacteria. So this one's called blood agar. It's agar, which is a jelly that contains blood. This is a chocolate agar that um, contains blood cells that have been burst, and that's why it looks like chocolate. Um, different bacteria will grow on these different um, agar preparations. Over here we have some different type of McConkie's agar, and we can see there's different colours, and those different colours correspond to different, um, in this case, sugars being added to the uh, mix. So on this side, lactose has been added, and we get some bacteria growing here. And on the other side, there's no lactose, but we can still see bacteria growing there. So we can add things like um, different uh, sugars, we can add different uh, sources of protein, we can even add different hormones, which will uh, affect the amount of growth. And we can add that to the agar mixes, and we can use that to distinguish between bacterial species. Bacteria need moisture to grow. They need the moisture to move around um, so that they can find food, but also so they can reproduce and they have space to go to. So if there's no moisture in the environment, bacteria have a very difficult time reproducing. And we use this when we're preparing food. So drying food, so here's beef jerky. So with beef jerky, you air dry the food um, and you remove water from the food, so in this case meat. If there's no water, then the bacteria can't reproduce. So the food stays preserved for longer before it starts being broken down. Jam is a similar system. You add a lot of sugar. When you add sugar, then you're setting up osmosis. So there's a lot of sugar outside. Um, so bacteria sitting in with the fruit, the water will come from inside the bacteria out to try and dilute down the sugar syrup that is the jam. And that stops bacteria growing because there's just not enough water inside the um, bacteria for them to survive. And this is known as available water. So even though it's moist, that doesn't mean there's available water that bacteria can use inside their cells. Over here we're using salting, which is a very similar system. So um, you put a whole heap of salt on your meat, that draws the water out of the meat, and that stops bacteria from being able to reproduce in it. Bacteria need specific pH conditions as well in order to survive. So some bacteria can survive well when it's really acidic, and it's these guys up here. Some like it around the neutral, and some like it when it's basic. And then we use this in another food preservation technique, which is called pickling. Pickling is where you put your food in vinegar, and that stops the bacteria from growing. Um, because the pH of vinegar is so low, the bacteria that would be on the food, they can't survive anymore, so they stop growing. One of the most famous bacteria that can survive in acidic situations is Helicobacter pylori, which was worked on by these two scientists here who are Australian scientists. So there's Dr. Barry Marshall and Dr. Robin Warren. What they discovered is that the bacteria that's found in stomach, um, inside stomach contents, it's very acidic inside your stomach, you have acid there specifically to kill bacteria. They found that this bacteria causes stomach ulcers, which are burns and lesions on the inside of your stomach wall. The way they discovered it, well, they came up with the uh, idea, and the way that they figured out that it occurred was um, uh, Dr. Barry, he swallowed a mixture that contained the Helicobacter pylori, and he developed stomach ulcers really quickly after that. 
and to treat him, he took some antibiotics, and those antibiotics healed off the bacteria, and his ulcers disappeared fairly quickly. So um, they won the Nobel Prize in 2005 for physiology and, mem uh, physiology and medicine for their discovery. Bacteria produce wastes as well, and those wastes need to be removed in order for the bacteria to survive well. If you don't remove the wastes from living things, they start to die fairly quickly, and this goes for bacteria too. We use some of the wastes that are produced by bacteria um, for ourselves. So at rubbish dumps, you have a lot of organic matter being broken down by bacteria, and when they do that, they produce methane gas as a waste product. We can collect that methane gas, so these are wells that are stuck down into the uh, rubbish dump, and then we can take that gas away and we can burn it, and by burning it, we can generate heat that we can use to generate electricity. Bacteria have a very important role in the environment as decomposers, and what that means is they break down organic matter and they can leave nutrients behind that other organisms can use. If you don't leave your food in the fridge, it gets broken down by bacteria. Bacteria have very important roles in nutrient cycles in the environment, and we're just going to look at the carbon and nitrogen cycle briefly. So in the carbon cycle, we're cycling carbon from the atmosphere into the surface and then back again. Where bacteria are important is down here by breaking down um, the organic carbon that comes from dead organisms like trees and animals. So bacteria break that down, they release that carbon into the um, soil, and that soil can be used by other organisms to grow. We'll just quickly look at the nitrogen cycle. There's lots of bacteria species all the way through the nitrogen cycle. So nitrogen has to get from the atmosphere into soil, so then it can be used by organisms um, and then released back into the atmosphere. So one place where bacteria come in are here in the roots of specific plants, there's bacteria that grow in nodules on the plants that take nitrogen from the atmosphere and turn it into specific um, chemical compounds that, that can then be used by other organisms to grow. Also, bacteria can break down organic matter that's already in the environment into um, different uh, chemical species like ammonium and nitrates and so on, and then they can go back into the atmosphere when they're broken down by other bacteria too. So there's lots of bacteria all the way through the nitrogen cycle. So today on Flipping Science, we looked at bacterial reproduction, their requirements for growth, and how they act as decomposers. That's it for Flipping Science today. See ya.